current story arc is, uh, I think we have two issues out so far, my first two issues. My first one started with uh, issue 20. It's a four issue arc that uh, features some of the old uh, 70s sword and sorcery DC characters. So uh, though they have a special place in my heart actually. I'm afraid to admit there, that I actually own the comics and bottom them and they came out with Claw the Unconquered, the Stalker, and um, Beowulf are all sort of guest starring in this, so it sounds a little wild, but uh, kind of has a Savage Tales feel to it, you know, the old uh, Marvel, did I say Marvel? Uh, the old uh, Marvel magazine, you know, so I'm kind of channeling my Barry Smith through it and having a really good time with it, and it's, it's a little bit different, I think, than what has been going on in Wonder Woman, but uh, I know when it, the first issue came out, people were freaking out, like, why is she in a fur costume? Oh my gosh, you know, but everybody seems to, are starting to get what's going on and seems to like it. So we're, we're really excited about what we're doing on it right now and what we're gonna be doing in the future. There's a new villain coming up. I know that um, one of the covers has made the solicitations about, uh, that has Wonder Woman the movie on it. And that actually is a fill-in that I'm not gonna be doing because uh, we're trying to get ahead. When I took over the book, I think we were like two issues ahead is all. And so you go to a couple shows like this and suddenly you're really pressing the deadline. So I want everybody out there to know I'm not slow. It was just circumstances. Uh, but anyway, so uh, Bernard Chang is going to do, I think, a two issue fill in that deals with this sort of, uh, uh, I think, probably a little tongue in cheek approach to the pop culture icon of Wonder Woman, where they have actually have Wonder Woman, the movie comes out and she has to kind of deal with the whole. Uh, but here I am spilling the beans on something I'm not even working on. But um, after the, um, after the uh, Savage Tales storyline, she has a new villain that I think Gail described as, okay, I'm gonna get in trouble here, but I'm gonna say it anyway, what the heck. Uh, Gail described to me as sort of um, Wonder Woman's doomsday. You know, as Superman, the doomsday character. Not, I'm not saying she's getting killed or anything like that, but that kind of a psycho type you know, character that's really gonna challenge Wonder Woman. Um, but it's a new character, and uh, so we're still, I'm at, still actually working on the designs for that. Gail came up with a design that she liked, and now I gotta go in and sort of add my, or I could be lazy and just use hers, and I don't have to do any work, but it probably won't. I'll probably add a little something here and there. She has always been, to me, kind of the uh, female Superman of the book, or at, as I referred to, I think, when I took over the book, was the DC's version of Captain America. And I don't, I know a lot of people look at her as kind of a sex symbol or something like that. I never have. I mean, she's a beautiful woman, a strong woman, and, and, uh, and that's how I try to portray her in the book. But I'm, I know I've sort of got a reputation for being, uh, doing some cheesecake type stuff, which I've never really wanted to do and kind of got thrust into. Um, but I'm not treating this character in that way at all. And I, I think when I worked on Ms. Marvel, I tried to give her the respect that the character deserved, and I'm trying to do that with Wonder Woman as well. Uh, I mean, obviously she's a superhero, so she's beautiful, has the perfect body, she's an Amazon, all this kind of stuff, but I really, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to portray her as a strong, iconic female character rather than a sex symbol. If people want to bring that to the comic, you know, that's on their own, but it's certainly nothing that I'm intentionally trying to put in there. Gail's been terrific. You know, I even if she wasn't, I probably wouldn't say that because, you know, I don't want to cap on my writer, but she truthfully has been great. Um, you know, she's uh, really open to ideas and actually what I've needed from her mostly since I jumped on the book, since I've been at Marvel for like five years, was like her filling me in on, what are you talking about here? You know, what does this mean? And, and she's been great, easy to communicate with, always accessible, um, very supportive, and like, you know, it's very up for my interpretations of some of the stuff that, you know, she'll come to me with an idea, and then I'll come back and say, what about this? And she'll go, oh, yeah, I love it. So, you know, I, I've had real good fortune for the last few years to work with really good writers, and Gail's just another one of them. Yes. Um, one of the reasons I came over to DC was for that opportunity. And I'm working on something with Dan DeVio right now. But since Dan is always at these shows, he never gets a chance to like finish, take it that extra mile. But it, we're, uh, we've been talking about something that we both agree on at this point. 
that we want to do and think will be good, but it still hasn't made its way all the way through the uh, DC ladder, so it could die at any time. But uh, it is my intent to, if not create our own stuff, to be writing and drawing a project at some point. So uh, we'll see how that goes.